all right so this is going to be a step-by-step -step guide for the usmle step one exam and i'm dr omar khan internal medicine physician and welcome back to this channel and today we're going to be talking about step one and we will be covering everything resources timelines what is included in this exam how will you test yourself resources everything else so it's gonna be comprehensive stick around till the end and it's gonna be a long video so let's get started right now all right let's show you where the real money is so this is a sort of a sample well not a sample but a dummy report card for your step one score this is just going to show the breakdown of this test so in generally you have the foundational science concepts foundational sciences basically meaning basic sciences the things that you will be learning in your first few years of medical school and just to mention this that this is of course suitable for american medical students however generally this is going to be for international medical graduates but everybody can stick around and i will share some details about what you just need to do to get your stuff one passed in the easiest possible manner all right so the most important will be your foundational steps so make sure you have the basics right of course that is what you need to do for your exam purposes then there is always a breakdown and people sometimes study based on systems as well as per the subject right so with systems you have the general principles behavioral sciences behavioral health and whatnot reproductive respiratory cardiovascular musculoskeletal a lot of people prefer to do it subject wise so you have pathology pathology is the most important one over here 44 to 52 percent and you can go down this list physiology biochemistry pharmacology gross anatomy and everything else down below genetics is also there i actually love genetics so i don't know why it's the least but at least we have an idea what it's going to be now for the eligibility criteria for us students so of course uh, you are a current medical student or graduate all right you can be a us or a canadian all right and your school needs to be accredited by the lcme that's basic right and you could also be a do in a do program this was for the md program and you your school is accredited by the american osteopathic association so that's pretty plain and simple let's moving on for international medical graduates your college or university now this is going to be important college or university needs to be in the directory of world directory of medical schools so this is going to be important if your seniors have gone through the assembly process then you are sometimes it happens that colleges don't maintain their accreditation and they may fall out and this actually happened recently in a, with a few colleges so make sure that your college stays up to date with all of these things and after that if there are any changes make sure you keep in touch with the ecfmg if there are any changes to some of these criteria so now that you have a basic idea you need to head to usmle.org and now this is the home page now what you need to do over here is go right up on top over here apply for exams okay then you need to scroll down and step one is what you will be focusing on all right and of course this here right here apply through the nbme is for us graduates since we are focusing on international graduates you have to apply through the ecfmg right over here okay so if you already have this you already done this then you know what to do over here but if you have not done this before if you have been never been issued a usmle ecfmg identification number and you want to request one then you click over here go through this this is uh, some regular reading material tick the check boxes make sure you read this because they don't appreciate irregular behavior make sure you just go through this and check the boxes uh, go through this screen and yeah check a few more things and go ahead with getting your ecfmg number all right so what happens in the exam it is a computer-based mcq exam and in sense almost all medical schools across the world are mcq based now uh, much easier and uh, yeah that definitely helps out it is eight hours long seven blocks uh, around 40 questions each now you can actually take breaks between these seven blocks because you actually get an hour's break time now what i do is i don't normally recommend that you take a break after every hour let's say the first two hours take a five minute break after the third hour take a five minute break the fourth hour go and have a little bit of lunch don't eat anything too heavy then after that you have enough time that you can take five to ten minute breaks after each block and i think that will set you up i normally remember that i would just put my head down for just two three minutes and that would refresh me i don't need anything else get back there it would be as if you had a small 
a kitty nap and you had that and you're ready to go with your block all right now the fees of course we registered right then of course we have to look at the fees so the exam fee you can of course appear for this exam whether you are in the us or canada or anywhere on earth it has to be a pro metric center p-r-o-m-e-t-r-i-c so you can find that and that is how you will be scheduling now the exam fee is of 1100 and if you are outside the us or canada you will have an additional charge of 195 dollars so just keep that in mind of course you have done the registrations before you apply for the exam the one thing that you do need to understand over here is that you will be actually selecting your eligibility period now you can basically choose a three months to schedule for your test you can schedule a three month block so whenever you're timing your preparation make sure that okay within those three months you will probably be ready and just so that you have it in the back of your head there will be a form called form 183 to ecfmg now you will have to get that signed from your college's dean of course that you will figure out as you go through this process so once you actually get this form filled up and you send it to ecfmg now within about two to three weeks ecfmg will send you an email with your scheduling permit now this is going to be an important document and that you will also need to bring to your examination day so keep this in mind a couple of things you just have to know about and everything will be fine all right so when should you be taking your usmle step one so this answer is going to be a little different and depends on when you actually started your preparation if you actually started your usmle preparation in your first year of medical school being an img you picked up usmle since your first day i think you should be ready by your third or fourth year but make sure that you are good with your pathology because pathology needs to be fairly fairly strong a lot of imgs actually attempt their step one in their fourth or their final year of their school so it depends sometimes your school could be five years or it could be four years it depends however you need to make sure you're getting a passing score at least well of course we don't have scores anymore uh, yet make sure you are passing because i remember the results for 2022 that around 74 percent of international medical graduates were passing the step one however that does mean that there are 26 percent who are failing so you don't want to fail this exam because if you do that there's so much competition that you may not end up matching and not getting your residency so the goal is always that you are going to be passing so if you want to do it during your medical school that's great if you want to do it after your medical school that is perfectly fine make sure you are passing all right so preparation time four to seven months depending upon how good is your basic sciences now i would actually suggest that at the end you have a one to two months dedicated time you could probably do this during medical school you may have summer vacation or summer break perhaps or a lot of schools actually give you time for some extra activities you could probably look to utilize this time but i do recommend that you have at least one month of dedicated time immediately before the examination all right now where the real money is so uw is one of of your main questions and answers book first aid as i already talked about it first aid for the usme step one is going to be your go-to i think marry this book uh, if you can at all um, pick it up from your first day of medical school and go over this at least i believe that you should go over around two to three revisions of this book my friends first aid has practically 90 percent of what you need to know you need to know this material and i would suggest that whatever information you gain from any other source try to add it as a note or a sticky whatever in your first aid because that is going to be the book that you will be revising at the very end and it's going to be so quick at the very end that you will be flying through it and you just need one of these things to get you through for the us emily world these are around 4,000 questions so now jumping over to the uw exclusive slide i would say start early if you are going for your step one after your graduation I would say start at the same time that you are picking up your first aid. If you are preparing during medical school, I would say in your third year, after you're done with your anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, you're done with most of your pathology, pharmacology, mm -hmm. I think that is probably a good time to start UW because now it will actually give you some benefit because you already have some knowledge and UW is actually good for doing the questions 
and looking at the answers and see what you missed. If you missed something, then park it down either with a UW or actually on your first aid or mark that aspect, that piece of knowledge somewhere that you will have easy access to that you won't forget in the future. The purpose of UW is to get you to recall your memory through these questions. Then uh, jumping back here, boards and beyond is okay. A lot of people also go for Pathoma because they also have lectures associated with Pathoma and if you can purchase lectures that is an excellent way to go through this uh, reading material. Sketchy is also good people go for this pharmacology and microbiology and if you have any source uh, that you want to watch YouTube videos divine intervention podcast is something that you can possibly look at but it could be anything I don't want you to go into too deep you don't need to become a pathologist with your USMLE stuff one you just need to know the basic information and the USMLE first aid is for step one and Pathoma will provide you exactly what you need actually probably sometimes even more than what you need all right jumping back to first aid just to home in the point it is very comprehensive you know this is going to be your bible for your USMLE preparation annotate your UW notes into it uh, multiple revisions as I said two to three at least that will create a solid foothold for your preparation then a few testing resources we already talked about in UW however the NBME practical exam to my understanding it is the most representative exam and they have this updated every year and there are numerous exams and you can go through them so they are also in book form as well as online forms online form will be a bit more expensive but you can go for that additionally of course the UW self-assessment tests are also pretty good they actually look to simulate the examination environment and that always helps out because i do believe you need to do at least one simulated exam and that will just give you the feel of it and then there are is also something called the free 120 make sure you go through a couple of these if you are getting a reasonable score and you can of course check with your seniors okay what were your score when you were going through these tests and of course you pass right make sure you are passing that is the number one criteria here don't rush it if you feel you're getting a lower score i don't want you to rush it i want you to pass because if you are a foreign medical graduate and you fail your USMLE step one, I think, well, you can never say never. However, I think you will have a, a really strong uphill struggle to match given all the competition that there is. A few more general aspects that you need to know about. So you can actually schedule this exam throughout the year. And the exam is available in a morning time and an afternoon time. I would recommend that you arrive at your testing center at least 30 minutes before your schedule time because you know they may need to get you in, ask you a few questions, and you need to sit down and see where your locker is and everything else. Then again, another important aspect you need to know is that you cannot reschedule your exam within 30 days of your scheduled date. So that is something a little important. However, I do believe that they do make amends or they do allow if you have any significant medical issue, but of course you need to have the proper documentation and everything else for that and you will need to be in touch with them via email to try to get that done. But of course, make sure when you select your date, you are ready and you're all set to go and you would be more or less ready for your exam. All right, that was it. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully this gave you a 360 degree idea about this whole process and probably gave you some ideas for your own self. But if you are using some other resource, let me know in the comments below. I would love to know what is helping you out. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.